guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale, and I'm joined live by Pompeo for another Top Ladder Live series. Of course, Pompeo playing his signature deck, and this guy is just so incredibly good with this deck that I know win or losses in these matches, we're bound to get some incredible gameplay. Always love having the Mexican pro Pompeo on the channel here. So we'll talk about deck strategy, even though it's not the first time we share the deck, but we'll talk about it facing the current meta in the game. So hopefully we'll get some nice matchups here. He's about 40th right now in the world. Let's see if he can push closer and closer to number one. Now before, it looks like we're going against a giant miner, maybe triple spell deck here to start things out against Karma. Before we get to the play-by-play -play and the strategy tips and advice for the deck, I do want to let you guys know that I am doing every single day up until Christmas, I'll do a 12 days of Christmas giveaway, uh, all kinds of prizes, PayPal cash, uh, gift cards, iTunes, Google Play, and more, all to you guys from me and my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. So check out our information at CWA and at Bren Chong on Twitter. And also, if you guys want, I'll extend it to Instagram. I don't know if you guys use Instagram more than Twitter or what the kids use nowadays. Honestly, me, I still prefer Twitter, but I still am active on Instagram as well. Anyway, check me out on all those social media platforms and uh, you won't regret it. Hopefully, hopefully some of you guys, my loyal viewers, will uh, win some of those prizes. So we're going against a Minor Prince Giant Mega Minion. We don't know if it's Triple Spell yet, but I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's not now that he has Prince in there. Either way, we will see. And, and as uh, about 15 seconds left here in single Elixir time, things are going to really pick up here and you'll see that Pompeo is much more aggressive as you would suspect he would be in double elixir time. He has to deal with this defensive sequence here and really nice defense. Uses the miner to distract, cycles to that ice golem to block for the miner. Meanwhile, the mega minion was doing some work on that, uh, the opponent's miner on our tower. However, they did get a few hundred damage of tip damage in. So, interesting prince opposite lane. Pompeo immediately responds with the, uh, the tombstone. And now, I wouldn't be surprised if he drops the balloon and he does. So, we are going all in on this left lane right now, guys. Fireball down. Zap down. Hunter down. Tower is about to be down, guys. He just ignored that giant push in the back by the opponent there. And now he has to deal with the giant prince. But the Inferno Dragon's on that tower, guys. Zap comes down. Inferno Dragon. Man, they use the Zap on offense and the Inferno Dragon takes down the tower. Man, Pompeo starts off with the big, big victory there. A three crown using this deck. Not something that we're necessarily super used to uh, seeing. Let's go ahead and hop into the next match, guys. All right, guys, so match number one was a three crown. Nice way to start the video, if I do say so myself. Here we go again, C990099 clan bracket forward slash. What the heck does that mean? Anyway, we're going against him either way. We'll call him Clen. Hey, and he's playing maybe uh, Princess Minions, so who knows, right? Mini P.E.K.K.A.? Okay, that, I'm thinking a Hog deck probably, right? So we'll see what he does here. Pompeo takes that Fireball value, hits the Mini P.E.K.K.A. the tower and the Princess there. Now we have to deal with about a half health Mini P.E.K.K.A. coming down the right lane. Looks like he's just going to ignore it with a Tombstone. Tombstone will go bye-bye, but it was already low on health. And here it comes. Goblin cycled in the left lane. So I'm thinking maybe Hog Freeze or hog rocket either way right uh it's like the simple deck essentially uh either with freeze or, or with the rocket i don't know what you guys are any of you guys playing hog freeze right now I like Hog Freeze. I, st I still think that, that Hog Freeze is super strong, but I still think that Hog Rocket version is really solid, too. If you guys missed that video, I did one on it maybe a week or two ago. I'll put it in the show notes in case you guys want a uh, kind of a pro interview guide on that deck. However, I do like Hog Freeze, but it's still not my best deck in the meta. Maybe I'll share with you guys my favorite deck. I just pushed 450 trophies with it two nights ago. However, with that said... I was low in trophies to begin with, so I don't think it's like an amazing feat. But here we go, a hog on the left tower. It looks like we're going to tower trade here. We get a balloon in the miner on the right tower. Freeze comes down for the opponent there. We're going to take the right tower. There's no doubt about that. The question is, can we uh, protect this left tower? And it looks like we can. Princess does stay alive, though, so we we'll respond immediately with the Inferno Dragon. Pompeo is not going to give up that tower. So now we have the tower lead here as we go into double elixir time. 
Let's see how his gameplay changes now in double elixir time, especially since he does have the advantage here. So he places a tombstone. I wouldn't be shocked if he, okay, there it is, a fireball here. So really strong defense again, preventing that tower from going down, but it is down to 305 hit points remaining. By the way, guys, I'm going to upgrade my mic probably tomorrow, just kind of a side editing note. So hopefully I know when I get excited in some of these matches, I tend to get really loud and blow up my speaker uh, volume. So I'm getting some nice studio quality new microphone. Uh, if any of you guys are curious about the hardware that I use, I will link it in the, uh, the description below. So hey, we were right in both scenarios. They're running Freeze and Rocket in this deck. And Freeze comes down right before that balloon is it going to get to the tower no it's not but the the uh, skeletons there take that king tower to almost 50 percent hp so now we have to be ready this guy can be super lethal he can rely on the rocket on defense he can rely on the freeze on offense so you're probably going to see pompeo be a bit proactive cycling cards right where he used that inferno dragon in front of the king tower to kind of clog up the lane now he misses this tombstone pull here i think he just assumed that they would come oh that was a beautiful inferno dragon missing out on that kind of a predictive freeze wasn't the best freeze by our boy clen there but here it comes i wouldn't be surprised if he rockets this down here in the right uh no okay there it is rocket comes down fireball comes down we have the inferno dragon on the tower again guys no zap in hand this time we have the zap we used it we get the tower down to 1005 hp as we're about 45 seconds into overtime here here it comes ice golem to block mega minion does he have freeze is he going to use it no it would have been an overcommitment anyway so a good non-freeze there by the opponent and things tick away here into sudden death overtime another balloon here aggressively placed now pompeo i talked to pompeo a little bit about his balloon strategy guys and he is he's okay with not always getting balloon hits obviously in an ideal world he's always going to be getting balloon hits with his balloon but sometimes especially in this situation just the death damage will really help out when you have a tower down this low remember he does have fireball and zap as well if he needs to start spell cycling down the home stretch now we only have a minute and 30 left here and being that the opponent does have again that freeze and that rocket i'm thinking it could potentially no because he could really fireball cycle if he if he wanted to just a, it's just a matter of being careful of these hog pushes you saw on the last push he put his tombstone right in front of the king tower and this time he's forced to use that defensive fireball because of the freeze of the opponent so that's another 20 seconds off the clock without using that fireball on offense so here we go again guys another balloon push can he switch things up he sends the miner into the opposite side this time does not catch it with the mini pekka because mini pekka was out of cycle the zap is down now it's just going to be a fireball zap and it will be pompeo's match in another three crown wow two three crowns in a row potentially but we have to defend against this hog here guys we know that freeze is probably going to come down here Where's the free? Okay, no freeze. Fireball zap. Boom. Done. Pompeo. Two, three crowns in a row. Way to go, dude. All right, let's go ahead and edit out and come, at to come back to you guys in match number three. All right, guys, match number three is underway. Here we go against Ray Reef from Illuminati. We have the Inferno Dragon to start things out behind the King Tower. When we're talking about starting plays with this deck, that's one of them. He'll cycle the Inferno Dragon to start a uh, start a match. Of course, we have plenty of air defense with the Mega Minion as well. We also have Fireball and, uh, you know, relatively fast uh, cards with the spell cycling as well. So Inferno Dragon's going to go ahead and go up against that Mega Minion, do enough damage so the King Tower, or the Princess Tower, excuse me, should be able to finish it off, but now we're forced to respond with a Mega Minion of our own. Not before taking two hits from the shoulder pad gold plated minion of the opponent i don't know i think with a tier three inferno dragon actually you can see with a helmet and whatnot and the horns i think that really looks cool i think the inferno dragon is one of my favorite star card uh looks what about you guys what's your favorite you guys know i love hunter too the hunter uh like chainmail i love it but i would give if I, you know that's the positive the negative is i do hope they add maybe a uh, a level four or at least some flexibility to change it up I, I actually really like the gold look but it is a bit redundant as that's the only option for skins so i hope they expand on the cosmetic skins in the game in the future i actually saw a uh, a screenshot of 
uh, during a Supercell presentation to a bunch of YouTubers who went to their office for Brawl Stars, they shared this screenshot. I'm actually going to make a note of the timestamp here so I uh, don't forget to include it in the video. Ah! But it looks like King Tower skins or something like that. So this is a 10... Okay, cool. So anyway, we get that note. I'll make sure I include it on the overlay for you guys. You know what? Why the heck not, guys? I'll, I'll also show you the other ideas that they shared with the YouTubers in Helsinki. I'll throw all those screenshots on maybe below me over the deck on the overlay. If you guys want to take a look, there's some cool like hologram tower, which looks interesting. It looks like it has no hit points, but it can still distract units uh, just like a regular princess tower would. And uh, a couple other cool ideas, even like a RAM type card, which we should be getting pretty soonish, I guess. No word on the timeline on the new card, though. So we're playing against a Balloon Freeze deck. That's more like it. And look at this counter push here by Pompeo. He sends in the balloon, the, the balloon, the Mega Minion, the Inferno Dragon, the minor opposite side. He doesn't catch that balloon in the freeze. Instead, he has to NATO. I was going to ask you guys, how is Pompeo ever going to get through Dude, are we going to have three three crowns in a row? What is this? What is this madness? Okay, so on that one, let's be fair. The opponent gave up at the end. But still, that is three three crowns in a row. And these matches, that last one, we had a long downtime in between matches. All right, guys, sorry, a little late to this match. There was a long downtime in between those matches. This time, we're against Monkeys, who's also, I don't know if Pompeo's top 10, but Monkeys is definitely top 10 right now. He might be top five using Golem. I want to get Monkeys on the channel. I recorded for a long time with Monkeys the other day, but... I think he, I think even by his own admission, he probably could have played better. Uh, so I think I might want to redo that. But either way, I hope to get Monkeys on the channel. He's one of the best Golem players in the world. And what's more, I hesitate even mentioning this, but you know what? He should be really proud of this. He's only 12 years old. <laughs> Monkeys is 12 years old, and he's always dominating ladder with Golem. So anyway, Pompeo takes the left tower from Monkeys. Now, can he defend this? A Lumberjack, a Night Witch, a Golem. The Tombstone does a good job. Zapka does a good job. Can he catch this Lumberjack is the question. The tower's on the Lumberjack. Wow. Just like that, a minute and 20 seconds into this match, we have a tower down. The Pompeo Signature Bomber emo is up. And man, Pompeo is in the driver's seat here, but I wouldn't put anything past my man Monkeys here. He's really good, especially in double elixir time where he can really turn up the aggression and already going at it here. You know Monkey sees the clan, CWA YouTube. You know he's trying to get the victory here to set the table for his video. Pompeo's three, three crowns in a row here so far on this video. Can he make it four? Or can Monkey stop him? So here we go. A nice, well, an interesting NATO there by Monkey's trying to get that Inferno Dragon away from the Golem. It looks like Pompeo's going to push opposite lane. It's an Ice Golem and a Balloon. Opposite lane. Miner comes in. This is going to be trouble, guys. On the very first starting opening sequence of this match, this is looking really good, by the way, for Pompeo. But the reason Pompeo went so aggressive same lane as that Golem with his Balloon was because look at the first card played up in the le top hand corner there, right there, that way. <laughs> Monkeys played uh, the Baby Dragon as the first play. That was a heads up play of Pompeo. Had he not already used the Baby Dragon there, you bet Pompeo probably would not have gone that aggressively same lane as the Golem. But Pompeo knew, he recognized, okay, I know Monkeys, he's playing a Golem deck, 10 seconds left in this match, guys. It's going to be another victory for the great Pompeo here against Monkeys. He gives him the good game. Monkeys is none too happy about it. Three seconds, can he pull out three in a row? No, he can't, or four in a row. No, he can't pull off four three crowns in a row, but it is four wins in a row. Guys, let's go ahead and do one more and then see how far Pompeo is on ladder. All right, guys, we are into the next match against Nova Fail. Fail. Let's see what he's playing, guys. Let's see how we do. So I think this will be the, the last match probably of the video. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Zap is going to come down on those bats for Pompeo and then immediately trying to punish at the bridge with the Goblin Gang is the opponent. So we talked about starting plays, guys. So I told you that he's happy to start out with the Inferno Dragon or the Mega Minion as a starting play, but that's second option. I probably should have mentioned that in the last replay in case people tuned out in between. 
in case they had enough of this Pompeo dominance, right? But uh, Tombstone, obviously. Any deck that has Tombstone, I think it's safe to say that is your ideal starting play. And oh, what a beautiful matchup to share with you guys. Three Musketeers Giant, and I mentioned this in my last video, but this is still definitely a super viable Three Musketeer deck, and it has Inferno, uh, excuse me, it has the uh, Pump too in it. And Zap comes down on the Inferno Dragon, but he's still gonna get a little bit of a power up here. How much can he get? Oh, another extra 500 damage or so. Look at that beautiful Ice Golem there, knowing that he had the Minion Horde in hand. Another brilliant play. Just very good deck identification there from Pompeo. When you're going against this deck, you know they have two major air counters, maybe three. Three Musketeers, which are out of cycle. Minion Horde, which is why he placed the Ice Golem in front and bats so ice golem would have killed bats or ice golem plus zap would have killed the minion horde that's exactly what happened there and the opponent does pump up pompeo does have his minor in hand but he's not going to send in the obvious minor attack knowing that the opponent has goblin gang and bats in cycle so these are just heads up plays you can tell that pompeo is thinking about now he doesn't have goblin gang in cycle now he doesn't have bats in cycle so now if he wants to go ahead and attack that pump he can but he has to deal with his battle ram first now he has to deal with a minion horde so a good job by the opponent keeping that pressure up and hence also preserving their elixir pump so an inferno dragon he has to buy some time and he did so with the inferno dragon there nice goal to pull some of those minions from the horde back into the right lane now he has to deal with his second push it's going to be another three musketeer and giant push he has fireball zap in hand beautiful fireball zap that's six elixir for nine elixir and it puts pompeo right back into the same elixir range i think he was in the uh a little bit behind excuse me on elixir up until that moment but he's saving the zap and the fireball for the three musketeers and comboing them both pretty much every time now an aggressive push here by the opponent minor comes down Mega Minion is ready, and it looks like this is going to be another win here from Pe for Pompeo. Dude, this guy can't lose. It, well, I don't want to be too premature here. He needs to get this balloon to the tower. Balloon's going to go down, it looks like. No, balloon's not going to go down. Balloon, he's going to go down on the tower. <laughs> GG. Wow, guys, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's do one more match. I'll be right back at you guys when he finds a match. Then we'll finally check in and to see how high he is on the leaderboards. Be right back with you guys. All right, guys, against Nova Rubin. This is a good final match, I think, for the video. Let's see what Pompeo does against Ruben and what deck that Ruben is running here. So it looks like maybe potentially three Musketeers from Ruben starting out with the Battle Ram and the Goblin Gang. I think the only other deck that runs Battle Ram, Goblin Gang, or maybe it could be the Recruit deck, the Hut Recruit deck. Uh, it could also be potentially maybe a P.E.K.K.A. Spam deck. Oh, we see the E-Wiz. I'm going to say it's definitely the P.E.K.K.A. Spam deck. Deck. So this is going to be an interesting matchup for Pompeo. Let's see how he deals with an E-Wiz in the opponent's deck. And I want to say that he has plenty of air counters, uh, Ruben that is, for Pompeo. So this should be an interesting matchup here. A nice Ice Golem there, able to get that freeze effect on that bandit, keeping him alive. He has Dark Goblin as well. So kind of counting the air counters. Look at that Dark Goblin. Dark Goblin looks pretty cool too with that skin. Perfectly timed Inferno Dragon to intercept that Dark Goblin while he was in range of the Princess Tower. And now the Inferno Dragon says, hey, I'll come chill with you for a bit. I'll help out against that Battle Ram. And here it comes, a miner on the tower, a balloon. See that balloon push, guys? Even though the E-Wiz was in cycle, probably not going to work out here for Pompeo. He's going to kite that band to the opposite lane. The Inferno Dragon's doing a little bit of damage to that E-Wiz, but he's still going to have to answer it probably. Or is he going to let it go? Looks like he's just going to let it go there. He did get a lot of damage. I know what, guys? I'm embarrassed to say. I missed how he even got that damage to the left tower. I was too busy watching what was going on with the E-Wiz and the Inferno Dragon defensively. A bad job on my part, but you guys have the luxury of rewinding and seeing how he got that damage onto the tower. Did he get the balloon death damage onto the tower? He must have, right? Or the miner got a lot of chip damage as well. Anyway, you guys can rewind and let me know in the comments what I missed, or I'll notice while I'm editing. So here we go. It's going to be a Mega Minion on that Dark Goblin. Now we have a P.E.K.K.A. and a Goblin Gang coming down the left lane. We're going to use a Defensive Miner, which is another play that we see often from Pompeo. We've seen it often in this video. He's going to come in with a Loon here, guys. I think he's going to... I think he might go in with a... Okay, he's going to just set up with a Tombstone because the opponent did use their poison. Hopefully, he can take care of this bandit. He does not, but he does have the Inferno Dragon set up. Now there's going to be a Loon push here from Pompeo. Now he uses the E-Wiz here, guys. 
This could be a big opportunity. What is he going to do? He's going to send in that Miner, this time on the Dark Goblin. A nice catch there by the opponent. Zap is down. Dark Goblin stays alive. Forget the Loon push, guys, but Pompeo is going to go ahead and be happy to fireball there. Ruben is playing this very, very well. Going to be tough for Pompeo to break through again with another Balloon push. So here we go. Ewis in the back. Same lane that Pompeo is going for. I've seen Pompeo just switch lanes in some of these scenarios. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him go potentially all out in the left lane, but it looks like he's happy just to defend at this point. A fireball comes down, a beautiful fireball catching that goblin gang. One second left and boom, here we go into uh, double sudden death overtime. Excuse me, guys. A, a miner comes in. Can the balloon get to that tower, guys? No, it doesn't. Unfortunately, that E was really stymieing that balloon there at the bridge near the river. The Mega Minion is going to get one shot. Ruby and says good game could it be an undefeated video here for pompeo i think it might be guys here he goes a dark goblin in the left lane 608 damage remaining on that left tower here we go it's going to be a tombstone down a predictive log the last card for ruben not a lot of uses for logs against the pompeo deck obviously now we see the zap go down so ruben basically held that log the entire game in his hands there another fireball this time on the tower a defensive mire for pompeo and oh boy he's gonna stop this big push here guys he has another tombstone another predictive log a really nice log there by Ruben now he has fireball back in hand at this point I think guys he needs a fireball minor maybe but he has to play defense here he has to here it goes another defensive minor He's taking a lot of damage from Ruben, though. This might not be over just yet. Oh, no. Okay. I thought the bandit was going to get a charge off on the tower there, and it's another battle ram. Ruben is absolutely relentless at this point with the bridge spam. The log comes down. All of a sudden, the tower is down to 948 HP. Another ice golem in hand for Pompeo. Okay, this is his opportunity here. Another E-Wiz at the, at the bridge here. Meyer's going to go on the tower. Relentless bridge spam for about 30 seconds straight. He takes the bandit hit, but he gets the fireball to connect g g what was that lag man g g pompeo guys that's gonna do it for the video we'll go ahead and end it there let's see where he is right now in the world pompeo is officially in 12th place not too shabby pompeo so guys check out pompeo's player stats and profile thanks to stats real in the description below huge shout out to bren chong make sure you check out our social media as well for all those giveaways guys thanks for watching really appreciate it all the way till the end much love and as always take care guys